What is up, YouTube? What's up, Event Lovers? Hope everyone's doing well. Um, sorry, I've been a bit scarce lately. Um, just been a bit busy with life and such. And I haven't really had much of an update on the Antiverse, as Ants Canada would call it. Um, so, yeah, things have just basically been going steady. Um, not much to tell and carry on about besides the colonies growing well. I thought, why not um, give a quick little update how all the colonies are doing. And um, then I will try and... Um, then I will try and see if we can maybe um, get some nice footage. Um, we'll begin with St. Tillis. Um, Colony has done so well. Um, really grown really quickly. Um, nice little brood pile starting. You can see a nice little major right about there that's going to come through. Um, let's see if I can get a little bit of a close up. Um, let's just try and see if we can hunt for the queen. So all these little specks right here are all eggs that have been recently laid. So all of that is going to be little eggs and little hatchlings and whatnot. Um, right over here, there she is. There's Queen Bee. Lighting is a bit terrible, sorry guys. I've got the uh, lamp over there on. Um, next, let's hit your Panera. They are doing extremely well. Um, those are now roughly, it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten eggs, I think. So you guys will recall from the last video, it was quite a bit different. It's now about six eggs later and we are going strong. So they're doing very well. Oh, and um, all the colonies have been recently, recently uh, fed. So they're all going to be nice and active right now. Um, I want to get to a nice little theory that I'm trying to test with my ants lately and maybe it's a theory that I'm going to be able to say that I'm teaching ants a habit. Um, Maculatus, oh, finally got an update on them. So you guys will recall that Anapolepsis was over here and <laughs> till about four days ago. Just two anapolepsis were holding off this whole colony of maculatus. Don't ask me how. I, I can't understand with, the, with these huge majors that I've got here in this colony. Um, I can't understand how it was possible. But maybe with pheromones and things like that, the anapolepsis were quite strong. So finally, what I did was I managed to fish out the anapolepsis out this little hole. They were quite aggressive. They came running here and fished them out. And they were sacrificed to the um, pit of death, is what I call the uh, drop tails. So that was quite funny. Uh, immediately consumed and yeah, I don't feel sorry one bit because they ate my damn queen. But anyway, here's a little queenie over there. She's doing super well. These mages guys get really big. It's unbelievable the size of some of these mages. Um, I think we've got one right over there that you can maybe compare, that you can see. I'm trying to spot with my eyes quickly if I can see another one that is like super sized. No, I don't really see them right now. Oh, he has one right here. It's a bit dark. But yeah, right over there. That major is about the same size as the queen over there. So it's pretty intense how big these majors get of maculatus. Love it. I do definitely love it. It's nice to have polymorphic um, ants. And I do love their golden color. It really makes them look unique. I haven't really seen these color ants in, in person until I started ant keeping. Um, we'll start off with Meronopolis next. They are doing also very well. Um, I just watered the nest now, so they've moved the eggs. They were roughly in this chamber over here. So they've dug all the way down here up until this section over here from what i've noticed um recently gave them some cockroach now let's see we do have any activity um nothing much besides a little bit of like i said i watered everyone now so they're all coming out of the nest and taking some soil out they're going to be eating nicely um oh, oh i can't believe i got this my 
or meso and dissipants, or however you pronounce it, have their first major, excuse me. Not real major, but the biggest one of the, the ants, freshly hatched or enclosed because um, uh, meso don't have cocoons. So they enclose themselves. So you can focus a bit. So you can see that by the lighter color, uh, she has recently enclosed, I'd say probably the last 24 hours or so. They're growing very nicely, um, feeding a bit of seeds mostly, and you can see the little seed pile, whatnot, uh, collection of seeds. Funny enough, I've tried a new diet with the ants, um, mince meat, beef mince meat, and they have been going bizarre for it. All the ants, all of them are loving it, even the mesel. So usually the seed eaters don't really consume a lot of proteins through um, scavenging or through um, uh, insects and whatnot. So their main diet is seeds. Uh, and I couldn't believe it how quickly they got they, they ate the little the little mince ball that I gave them um, all of them so maybe guys try a bit of mince it's a bit of an expensive product to feeding ants but if you don't have feeder roaches or feeder insects and you are struggling a bit um, it's really a nice little way that you can you can even freeze it I, I froze mine in a bowl and then um, Basically, once it was frozen hard, I took a hammer and I smashed it to little pieces about, I'd say about my thumb size. Um, that way that I can give a piece to the drop tiles, have they do the need. I can give bite off a piece or break off a piece. Um, yeah, there's a topic of that, but you know. <laughs> uh, for the smaller colonies, maybe like um, the European era, don't need such a big piece of uh, mince. But it's, it's really um, handy to have it in case you, um, you don't have insects to feed and things like that. Um, but do experiment with your ants. So, off to the main topic of the video, the drop tails. Now, you'll notice I gave some baby porridge. They absolutely loved it. Um, this was filled with um, honey and water mixture and now recently they ate it um guys um you'll notice they are basically now trying to climb on top of there um you can see the baby powder working real nice stopping them from cl climbing over that little ledge of uh, baby powder so the problem i've got is i'm starting to fear where this is gonna go i'm starting to fear where this drop to our colony is going because in a minute, I will feed them and you'll see why. And the next, why I'll continue to fear because of all those eggs. Now, this is just the one side. They've started digging over here. Excuse the glass, it's a bit dirty because of the water. They've started digging this side over here all the way down already. So now I'm thinking this is still the main nest section over here. They already make a provisions over there for when the colony grows. And you wonder, but why? Why do they need so much space now already? Because I can't, you guys can't fathom how many eggs that is now already. This is now already on the first year of growth. Going on second year that I've had the drop tiles. Now, I'm going to feed the drop tiles now to roaches. I'm going to make a little time lapse. And you guys will see how scary this looks from the tree down, all the way down here to where I'm going to feed the roaches and you'll see how they swarm. It is insane. Anyway, guys, hope you guys do enjoy the video. I'm going to leave the time lapse now for the end. Um, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Um, we've maybe got some good news coming soon. I've maybe got one of my friends, <coughs> Bugman, um, might be organizing us one of my dream species to have. Now, you guys might know if you've watched the channel that I've mentioned the dream species before. Guys, if I can get the species, I tell you, I will sacrifice all my colonies for the species. It is my favorite by far none. None come close to it because of how awesome they look, how aggressive they are, how polymorphic they are. And yes, you might have guessed it. It's Fulvipolosis. Campanotus Fulvipolosis. I know I'm butchering that name, but 
it's a tongue twister. Anyway, guys, enjoy the time lapse. I will have it set up. God bless. I've tried a bit, a bit of a time lapse now, but <laughs> I can't not talk and explain to you guys what I'm seeing currently. This is a drop tail swarm. This is insane. And there's still more coming. See how they're sprinting down all the way here, following the pheromone of tra trails. So I forgot to tell you guys about my theory. My theory is I'm trying to teach ants a habit that if something happens to the nest, i.e. Um, an outside catalyst of rain, um, human disturbance, something like that, me watching the nest, means that there's food. So my idea is that I want to try and water the nest when there's few workers over here. Okay, When I do water the nest, I want to see as much activity as possible to see coming down, searching for the food in this spot that they know I'm feeding in the spot every time. So the idea is water in the nest means food over here. So that is where I want to try and see where this goes and where I can... <laughs> Guys, uh, it's really... This, this is a sight to behold for a first-time ant keeper of this size colony. It is unreal where this colony is going. Now, many of you are thinking, oh, what? Are they going to be taking this roach and they're going to be eating it there? Some of you are thinking, oh, wait, are they going to be managed to pull it all the way up into the twig? Those of you that guessed the last part is 100% correct. <laughs> no jokes. They've taken this roach before and they've, both of them, by the way, they've managed to basically squeeze this roach all the way. Squeeze it, sorry. Uh, pull this roach all the way up until the twig and into the nest over there. So it is insane how quickly these ants have grown, how aggressive these ants are, how much these ants love food. There you'll see little pieces getting taken up into the nest. And the more food that gets taken into the nest, the more activity can be coming down. Because then now the rest of the ants are going to be spanning the food, spanning the pheromone trails, and they're going to be like, okay, I also want some. I also want some food. Food, glorious food. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm very excited today because I've, to be honest, I haven't fed them properly in about four days. I gave them a little bit of a mince uh, piece on, I think it was Thursday evening. So... I was hoping that they would be this aggressive and this swarming. Guys, it's, it's, uh, yeah. So I don't know where this colony is going to be going. <laughs> the idea is if I do need more in their space, I've got this panel of glass right here. So what I can do is I can build another nest enclosure like that and then just put it against this glass, fill it with sand, and they've got another nest section. Same with this side. The only problem I've got is the outward space is this enough. It's going to have to be. And for those of you that are wondering, but where will a colony stop? How do you stop it? How do you slow it down? Um, it's got to do with feeding. So um, if you do feed more and more and more, the colony will grow more and more and more because food is in abundance. If you start limiting food, um, the colony will uh, slow down production slow down the growth of the colony and in turn when times are tough uh, they'll start tightening the belt naturally now that's one of the reasons why i'm only feeding two roaches maximum i can't i i, I don't want to see this colony if i were to be feeding them four or five roaches a day there you'll see my breath is basically making them all scatter um so i'm only feeding two roaches a day uh, two roaches are feeding I want to see how much this colony actually manages to grow by just two roaches. 
and then we'll take it as it comes. Um, yeah, plant is dead over there. <laughs> um, the succulent didn't really flourish, but the cacti have. Cacti are loving it. I barely even water these things. So yeah, for future enclosures, I need to basically look to um, plants that can't don't get a lot of sunlight because the, um, the ant room is in a bit of a garage. So there's not a lot of light that comes here. And um, I'm just hoping that maybe I could get some plants that don't require a lot of sunlight, direct sunlight. So this guys, this is insane. I, I, I can't. But yeah, what's gonna happen is they're basically gonna move all along here and then they will move it all along the twig and into the nest over there. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Have a good one. And like I said before, God bless you and your families. And if I do not make a video before then, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless.